Hey there writers, welcome to Writer's Workshop. My name is Mrs. Lanning. Writers, this is such an exciting day. I have seen all of the great work that you've done as series writers collecting all of your books in the series into a boxed set. I am in the company of authors. In fact, just for a moment, I'd love for you to air high five. You can air high five me through the screen. And I'd love for you to introduce yourself loud and proud as an author. For example, if it was Cynthia Ryland, she might say, Hi, I'm Cynthia, and I'm the author of the Henry and Mudge series. I might say, Hi, my name is Mrs. Lanning, and I'm the author of the Gretchen and the Treehouse series. Let's hear yours. Awesome. Now, writers, did you know that when Cynthia Ryland finished her Henry and Mudge series, she didn't just stop writing series, she wrote another one. In fact, she wrote one all about Mr. Putter and Tabby. That was another series she wrote. She went on to write many series. Same thing with um, Dav Pilkey. He wrote Captain Underpants and then he wrote Dog Man and many other series. Just because you finish a series doesn't mean that you're done writing as an author. You may find another favorite character and write multiple books about them. That's what authors do. They write multiple series. It's a lot like write, learning how to ride a bike or play an instrument or learning baseball. Once you learn how to do it, you want to keep doing it. When you learn how to throw a baseball, you want to throw and throw. When you become a fiction writer, you want to write, write, and write. So we're going to get a chance to do that. Today, you'll have the opportunity to show off everything you know about getting started with a fiction series because you've written a lot of fiction books now. Before we start, though, I'm going to invite you to really think about what makes realistic fiction realistic. We already know that the word fiction means that the writer gets to play pretend. But then what makes something realistic fiction, realistic pretend? What does that mean? Today, I want to teach you that realistic fiction writers often study what makes realistic fiction seem so realistic, like it really could happen. Then they call on their own experiences to write stories that seem this real. For example, when you're playing pretend, and maybe when you were little, you had pretend tea parties. Now, if you said, oh, the elephant came to the tea party or this or that, that was really fiction pretend, right? But maybe realistic fiction would be I'm pretending to have a tea party, but I might say, oh, my brother came to the tea party and so did my cousin and so did my friend. That could be realistic, even though it was imaginary. I'm pretending, but it could seem realistic because those are people who really could come to my tea party. Now, writers, to figure out what authors do to make stories seem real, to make them realistic fiction, let's look back at one of our favorite books, Henry and Mudge and the Happy Cat. While I re uh, read particular parts of the story, I want you to ask yourself, what feels real about this story? So, for example, when I read this page, when they're all cuddled up on the couch, what feels real? It says, what is it? One night, Henry and Henry's father and Henry's big dog, Mudge, were watching TV. Well, right away, one thing that seems real to me is the place. Hanging out on a couch in the living room, that's pretty realistic. It starts in his house. It seems like a real house. They're not in a spaceship or out being pirates lost at sea. They're just hanging out in the living room couch. That seems very realistic. The characters are also ordinary people who do ordinary things. It's a boy, his dad, and his dog. Henry and his father are wearing ordinary, normal clothes and watching TV. And this feels very real to me as a reader. Like I said, they're not in pirate clothes or in a spaceship or in an um, astronaut suit. They seem realistic. Also, when someone knocks at the door, it says that Mudge hears the noise and starts barking. It doesn't say that he starts um, making crazy elephant sounds or doing something like that. He starts barking, doing what a normal dog would do. So do you see how I'm asking myself as I read what feels real in this story, like it really could happen? I'm noticing the choices that the author, Cynthia Rylant, made. The family, the way they're on the couch, the TV, the dog barking at the door. These are all details that seem like it's realistic. So now it's your turn to try. Look at the pictures and count on your fingers details that are realistic. And I can go ahead and read this page to you. So it says, in one week, the shabby cat turned into a happy cat. It loved three things about Henry's house. It loved the towel closet. It loved the bathtub. The cat loves things that cats love to do in real life. They love the towel closet. 
and the bathtub and much. The cat does not turn into a ninja or leave on a spaceship. This seems very realistic. It's a cat doing cat things. For example, in this one, the picture shows the cat snuggling up to the dog and that the cat is doing things like licking other animals. That's something that they do in real life, right? Sometimes you might see your dog lick the other dog's paws or the cat. That's something that animals do that seems very realistic to me. So writers, you thought hard about what feels real in this story and you zoomed in on the author's choices. You notice the way there's real animals, the animals do real animal things, the people, they're not going off in a spaceship or on a pirate ship, they're just hanging out at home on the couch. So we saw the way that Cynthia Ryland's stories are realistic fiction because even though it's pretend, it seems very realistic, like it really could happen. Every part of the story seems real. So writers, you know how to get started with a new series. You can look at our charts to help you get started. You know stuff we don't even have charts for anymore, like finding your own paper or a place to write. And you know you have a lot of work to get done. And as you're writing, you might ask yourself, what feels realistic about this story? Or how can I make this feel realistic? And so you can do that to your stories, making every single part of your story feel real. I can't wait to see what you come up with. It's your turn, friends. Writers go write.